You're not a hustler, you keep getting in front of you just can't flip it. You ain't really got it, you P Diddy, you be remixing. Oh, where just got a new Glock? <laughs> That's a free biscuit. Penny Tupac, know what's up, you know I'm the mill tick. I say this much. Um, most of my stories thus far have been revolving around me being at Lakeland Correctional and moving from there, or getting kicked out of there rather, going into GR Cotton facility in Jackson, right? However, what a lot of individuals don't know, like from the streets, and a lot of dudes who didn't get locked up prior to say 98 and whatnot, they didn't remember that they had what they call their an interstate corrections compact transfer. So an interstate corrections compact transfer was basically um, an agreement between different states as to where inmates could request to serve out the remainder of their time in another state. So what was going on at this time with Michigan is that Michigan was going through this overcrowded thing, right? A lot of the headlines back then, especially when they was um, discussing taking good time for the first time after all these years, was talking about how Michigan prisons was overcrowded, right? Now, the thing what a lot of people would argue was, if y'all so overcrowded, why are y'all locking up people at such an, an alarming rate still? So they got into this agreement with Virginia, um, actually, what is it, Greensville Correctional Facility in Jared, Virginia, where they were sending hundreds of inmates from Michigan down to that facility. Now the, the the thing was, if you didn't want to get transferred, you had to have a um, you had to have bought real quick, or had a typewriter, and then say you was about to put your appeal in and go through all that because if you had an appealing process, or you were trying to get back in them courts, they weren't allowed to send you down there or or, or get you caught up in nothing else because you had to be able to have a writ of habeas corpus or be able to produce yourself in court up here if needed to be for your court proceedings, right? Up in Michigan. The thing was when we so we <clears throat> I get caught up in that it was crazy because I have I was just talking to a brother on the yard I think it was Albert Jr. and he's yep Albert Jr. was giving me them um cornrows that I just started plaiting my hair up and whatnot and I had it kind of short and if you know about growing hair you know he he had daughters and this was a good brother he wasn't on that on no funnies tip so he used to twist me up for a couple bucks. It was getting my stuff, you know, jumping. That's when you mix that blue bergamot grease back then with the soft ray grease and whip it up and grease your scalp. And man, before you know it, you got a head full. So he twisted me up and he was just saying, damn, man, as long as you ain't get caught up in that Virginia shit, I ain't going no goddamn five, six, seven many states away. People hardly come visit now. Nah. And I'm thinking, yeah, moms them come all the time. I'm in Jackson. We from Detroit. That's like an hour ride or something like that, right? An hour or so. So... I'm like, damn, you're right. I don't want to get caught up in that shit neither. Lo and behold, they called my ass one day, talking about you packing up, you're going to Virginia. Oh, my God. Bro, you got to think. I ain't even been here, but <sighs> I had been at Cotton probably a year at that time. I didn't graduate in, in dignitary status amongst the brothers from assistant palace administrator to palace administrator. Um... I'm doing pretty good. Um, and you remember I was telling you all the previous story about the pay to play situation, my brother Pep. Me and him locked in. His father there. Um, yeah, and this is like a little small family. I got my homeboy Kenny Who that was there that I talked about previously. Uh, my man Alan Bay. So these is the homies that I grew up around. You know what I mean? And I'm about to like, damn, Kenny Who had went to the hole, but he was on his way back out the hole. But I ended up riding out to Virginia before he got out the hole. But this is like my family now. Some of these, a lot of them dudes that was, like I said, that was at um, at um, Lakeland with me end up at Cotton. So it was a distraught situation to say the least. Not to mention, I got to tell moms and them that I'm about to be all these states away for I don't know how many months. Now, at the time, I think the, the contract that they had with Michigan was like a two-year contract. And I want to say that they were not up on that contract yet. The terms hadn't ended as far as time frame. So now you got to pack all your stuff up. Now we going all these states away. Bro, let me explain something. On the way down to Virginia, this is what happened. One older dude, individual, older white dude, end up catching like a stroke. It's hot as hell, first of all. It's the summertime. It's like, I want to say, oh, probably July, June or something like that. So, um, 
It's hot as hell for one. They got this on this bus like 40 deep, chained up with the boxes. You no, know? so the black box like this, cuffed, right? And then your hands is cuffed in the box. So this is how you move it, and it's right at your waist. And then the chain around your waist and around your feet. So you shackle pretty damn good, right? Now, I'm on this damn bus. This older dude then collapsed. Now we sitting for I don't know how long until he um, gets service, right? They got to get him. It took so long. And then we got a flat tire. So between them two, it took us so long to even get on the road that we had to spend the night in a whole nother facility in Jackson, right? A transfer facility because they had gave our bed space away already. That's how fast they move, right? As soon as they already done process your transfer, they know you up out of there, they already got who coming next to fill that bed space quick, right? It's like the real, real modern slave plantation. They moving them. Bodies on top of bodies. You hear what I'm saying? So on the way down to um, Virginia, all this stuff happening, right? Not to mention, I'm like, damn, who gonna twist my hair up? And I don't smoke cigarettes. They passing out these cheap ass GPC, I think they were cigarettes. It's so smoky on there. And we ain't ate good and the and it's wobbling. I got motion sickness. I'm so lightheaded. I feel like throwing up and earling and everything. This stuff people don't tell you about like going to the joint, man. Riding on them buses and all that, man. That stuff is stressful and hectic. Especially I ain't used to that old clothes in area, can't breathe. Funky mother, you know what I mean? Dudes ain't wash their butt now. I don't know when feet stank. I ain't brush their teeth this morning. Ran out of toothpaste. It's so much going on. I'm like, listen, you hear what I'm saying? Right. So you got all this going on, right? With these, um, with all these cigarettes and all this stuff. Not to mention, I happen to blurt out, damn, who braid hair on here? Why does the only person to answer is the one that's furthest up from the bus? I'm probably like three quarters of the way to the back of the bus. So it's probably about 15 or so many dudes behind me. But this person get up and turn around and say that. I said me. Who said that? Listen, this is a grown man, right? He had to have at least a good 34, 36D on the titty. You hear me? I ain't knocking nobody who transgender or who identified different outside of their sexual orientation. Hey, do what you want to do. But you got to think, I ain't never seen nothing like this um, outside of uh, Miss Ann, um, who was like, you know, it's a real life. You got a real woman features in the man prison. Mind you, when we get down there, right, when we get down there to Virginia, he ain't last long. He ain't last long. He was out of there, like, probably, he was down there probably a week with us or something. He got up out of there quick. Right? Which is cool, because I cut my hair. I had, Before he got up out of there, I'm like, man, I'm not about to be going through this. I took and cut my hair. I put all that little work in. I had a little hand to have one of them little froze. It's about this long now. I whacked it. I went straight bald hair, straight naked face. That's I ain't had no mustache back then, really. So, it didn't even matter. But I did all that and went and looked like straight, like I was about to be on the straight nation of Islam. <laughs> For real, like my brother, we was all, I was clean. You know what I mean? So I ended up growing my hair back. And it didn't take long, probably about a few weeks. But I kept my facial hair pretty clean after that. Um, it was an experience, though. It was an experience going down to Virginia, man. And, and the reason why I say that is because when you get down there, it's a totally different energy. For one, because it's 90% black COs, right? And this 90%, 90% of them was women. So it ain't nothing like up here, right? Where you got all these little small town, little rough, little redneck hillbilly dudes who mad about life and a couple of rejects from Fargo, um, the women, you know, you very rarely, like the one I told you in Coldwater, who's kind of thick, she was straight. And you would have a few little black females here and there when you got closer to the city, like Jackson, Macomb, Ryan, Mom, some Adrian, I think maybe. I know like closest to some of the cities, you had more black COs. However, if they weren't on tip, they were worse than the white COs. So it was like beat it. But when we get down there, it's love, man. You talking about the best breakfast, like homestyle potatoes, pancake stuff. Not just on Saturdays like they do in Michigan. You get pancakes twice a month in Michigan. And you get waffles twice a month. It's like they mixed up Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. If you're lucky, you might not get that. They doing this every day. 
real fried fish on the bone, real smoked neck bone stuff, and whatever they not smoked neck bone, but like yeah, real like meat parts in your in your um beans and stuff. So it was a whole different vibe. It was real hospitable and real smooth. And I think their philosophy was like, you got to be down here, so we not about to put no extra stress and pressure on y'all. Y'all know what y'all supposed to do. Do it. If y'all don't, we coming for y'all. But y'all not about to stress our little eight hours and we ain't about to stress y'all time. It was like real love when it came to the compassion. I've never seen that much compassion when it came to correction officers until I went to Virginia. Right? It was so much compassion, though, that it got a little out of hand. And a few brothers end up coming back from Virginia with um, wives and, 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 and fiancés that used to be with... Um, Correction officers at Greensville Correctional, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah, I had a brother, um, I'm just gonna call him DX. DX was messing with this CO, and I'm gonna call her Rob, and we're gonna leave it at that. They was messing around, I, it, it, it fucked me up. It fucked me up when I when I saw how their relationship really was like, like real, like on some street stuff. Like, man, they in the hallway, necking up, and. And yeah, it was like no shame for a minute. Well, I'm not around us because he knew he could hold that. We knew he was going to hold that secret and whatnot and keep that in. Like, this, you got to figure this is 99, so this is a long time ago. So it ain't like I'm, you know, exposing nobody. But mm, it was a different vibe down there. That interstate, um, the interstate prison compact thing was deep because you really saw firsthand the first glimpse on how they can really pimp and pawn you out. Once you get caught up in that situation, it's like, okay, you, you can say what you want about what they cannot do and what they will not do, but I'm living proof of the fact that they will pimp and pawn you out for that dollar. You will be somewhere totally different in Siberia. Listen how this yard look, right? In, in Michigan prison, you got grass, you got trees in certain spots. Um, you got baseball diamonds with real grass around. You got weight pits, right? You got places there where there are some shade. No, not down there. It's dirt everywhere. It's dirt. Dirt road, dirt yard, fence, phones. That's it. The only thing you we had was the, um, I think it might have been a volleyball thing down there, maybe. But we definitely had a couple of hoop courts. No free weights. One little gym with a hoop court and then a universal machine to work out on that was kind of broke in some areas. So you got to think we down there doing heli calisthenics, push-ups pull-ups hanging off the bottom of the steps in the pods you know doing pull-ups if you if you trust your brother man you know what i mean you rock with him and he's solid then you, you hop on his shoulder he hop on your shoulder y'all do squats and you know put that resistance and whatnot that pressure on each other but you talking about like it was terrible it was like so devoid of life you you wouldn't even think if you if you had life you probably wouldn't think about escaping because where would you go and not to mention this is one compound and I think it's about three or four prisons. Like if I can get it, I'm gonna get I'm gonna try to get an overhead view of that and, and 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 pop it up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about, right? This place was deep and that was the only thing I didn't like about it. And we locked down super early. And every now and then any execution that went down in Virginia, they locked us down early and we saw that at night on the news. So it, and, and we got a whole new MA number when you went down there. You got to figure, I had a 261 number up here in Michigan. Get down there, I got a 271597 number. So, totally different MA number. And they let you know, and you sign off on, on paper that says that, hey, this is not Michigan. We don't care if you are inmates of Michigan. And down here, and under this contract, if you catch a crime down here, you are subject to laws in Virginia State or Virginia, Virginia Commonwealth. All right? We were subject, like, so, like, you, like, down there, they got what, death row. So... Not to say you got to kill nobody, but God forbid you had to, right? It ain't the same as up here where you can fight in the courts and get some time. No, they give. These ain't no Looney Tunes, but you won't catch this road runner. I know Adam, he carry 22s, but this ain't no jumper. Lil' Dog be fucking with the shit, but he ain't no plumber. But they ain't even see this shit coming, it's like ghost fucking. Uck in the trap, you leaving crumbs, it's like an old muffin. Cousin make his back up off the glass, it's like the old Duncan. Stop comparing me to him, I think you want something. Gotta put your cell on the trampoline and have your phone jumping.